Hi all, in this video we will see selenium important points. As part of this video we are going to see selenium official website, download selenium jars, configure selenium jars in Eclipse, write sample program to launch the browser and we will see HTML basics. For that let's go to the Google Chrome and go to the official website called seleniumhq.org the official website is seleniumhq.org this is the official website of selenium here you will find some basic documentation and who are the sponsors and you need to you can download the jar files from this download section the document is not that great but you will find some basic information the flavors and everything when you go to the download section here you will find the downloads for different kinds of language bindings. Here you can see Java, C Sharp, Ruby, Python, JavaScript and the respected version and the release date and you can have a download link and you will find the change log also means what is the difference between what are the changes between the previous version and the current version. Okay. And you can find here Selenium standalone server. So this is jar file. You can download this jar file, otherwise you can download from here also. If you download from here, you will find more than one jar file. And if you download from here, it will be only single jar file. Okay, I just downloaded this. If you go to here, show in finder. This is the Java 3.141.500.zip. You will get this kind of zip file when you unzip this. You will find so many jar files. You see that? If you open this, in this you will have some dot jar, dot jar. And if you go to the lips, you will find some other jar files. You have to use all these jar files to write the Selenium code. Otherwise, we just discussed that this is the one download selenium standalone server when you download that it is a single jar file you see that this is the selenium server standalone the same version these are all the previous versions you can use all these jars otherwise you can use this single jar okay we will see in the up upcoming sessions what is the difference between these uh, two types of jar files but you, you can use this jar file okay now we will configure how we will get the selenium jar into your eclipse so for that i'll go to the eclipse and here i'll right click new java project i'll name it as selenium demo and you can directly click on finish otherwise you just click on next and here you go to the libraries tab here and here you can find JRE system library. This is the basic library to write Java code in Eclipse. So now you need to click on add external jars. And you can add this single jar. Okay, you added this one, you see here it added. Click on finish. Now you can, you are ready to write the Selenium code. Okay, now this is the source folder. Inside this, I'll create a package. You need to create a package that is a rule, but without package also, you can write the classes, but it is best practice. I'll just create a package called Selenium and then finish. Inside this, I'll create a class, right? Right click, new class. I'll name it as launch browser okay now we need to write public static void main this is the starting point of your execution Sorry.
so this is the starting point of your java program so now inside this i need to write the code to launch the browser so how to launch the browser to launch the browser first we need to go to the same official website here when you come down you will find third party drivers bindings and plugins here third party browser drivers not developed by selenium hq these are all not developed by the selenium hq but you need to download these driver files you see that browser drivers mozilla gecko driver to launch the mozilla browser means firefox browser google chrome driver to launch the google chrome browser so i just right click open in new tab this is also i will open in new tab when you come here you see the latest version is 0.23.0 here you will have operating system specific files you see if it is mac you need to download from here if it is linux 64 from here if it is windows 32 here windows 64 here okay you need to download uh, with respect to your operating system mine is mac machine i already downloaded so i'll show you that and this is the latest version october 4 2018 it is released and then when you come to the chrome you see that chrome driver 2.45 and it is compatible with your chrome version version 72 72 here if it is 2.44 it is compatible with 69 to 71 means the chrome driver and your chrome browser should be incompatible means it has to be sync with this version if your browser is between 72 72 you need to use 2.45 otherwise you will get some issues it will not launch the browser it will navigate to the url it may not perform actions on the browser if it is two if your browser version is less than 70 means 69 then you need to use 2.44 okay you just click here it will download if you click here it will go to the other section here you see mac 64 win 32 linux you need to download from here once you download you will find like this gecko driver for mozilla chrome driver for chrome these are all older versions okay when you download this it is you see it is unix executable file in mac machine if it is windows machine dot exe executable file okay once these are ready we need to set some system property that you need to mention where my executable file is you need to mention to the system that here is my executable file means that is chrome driver or firefox driver whatever it may be for that what you need to do system dot set property system dot set property it is key value pair what is the key web driver dot chrome dot driver this is the key and the value is where your driver executable file in your machine okay you need to mention that path so i'll copy that path here give me one second this is the path in this folder structure i have chrome driver if it is mac machine like this otherwise if it is windows machine if it is windows machine you need to mention in which drive your that exe file is it may be d c e according to your drive where you downloaded i am just giving an example that i assume it is in d drive then you need to mention this d drive and the folder structure at last chrome driver dot exe you need to mention this exe you need to mention in the mac machine that is not needed this is the only difference between mac and windows if it is mac machine it is for mac machine and this is for windows machine okay this is mac machine so i'll comment this okay you need to mention this system dot set property then you need to write 
web driver you need to mention or create an instance for this new chrome driver now you need to import this web driver is an interface you need to import this chrome driver is a class you need to import okay once you import you see that import org dot open q dot selenium dot web driver import org dot open q dot selenium dot chrome dot chrome driver now these two lines are enough to launch the browser okay you need to set the system property web driver dot chrome dot driver and you need to mention the path the chrome driver and web driver driver is called new chrome driver these two lines are enough to launch the browser okay first what i'll do i will comment this if this is means without this line what you will get i'll right click run as java application then we'll see what will happen exactly you see that you will get an exception you see that the path to the driver executable must be set by web driver dot chrome driver web driver dot chrome dot driver system property for more information go to this link okay it is clearly saying that path to the driver executable must be set by this key web driver dot chrome dot driver so we did the same thing right we did the same thing so now i'll uncomment this now we'll run right click run as java application you see that chrome driver opened but it is not navigating to any url the reason is we did not mention where to go okay now if you want to go to somewhere once you open the browser for that we have one of the methods called driver dot get get is a method then if you mention something in in the get method then it will navigate to that particular url so here you need to mention the url where to navigate so i am just mentioning this url i just right click run as java application now it has to launch the browser and it should navigate to that particular url you see that it is navigated to demo.automationtesting.in slash register.html okay this is how you launch the chrome browser then what about firefox okay to launch the firefox you need to mention the same system.set property and here instead of chrome you need to mention gecko g e c k o gecko uh, just we saw that here right is the gecko driver okay and then instead of chrome driver you need to mention gecko driver and here instead of chrome driver it should be firefox okay you need to import this that's it these are the three changes you need to do here it should be gecko it is gecko driver here firefox driver that much is enough remaining code will be the same if it is chrome or firefox the code will be same except these two lines so i'll right click run as java application this time it has to open mozilla firefox and it has to navigate to that url you see that this time it is firefox and it is navigated to that particular url okay this is how you can launch different kind of browsers in selenium okay now we'll see what is the basic html right we have seen that basic html basics why basic html okay for that go to here this page just assume this is your website you need to automate okay so how you find these elements you will have different kind of elements 
So to find these elements, we need to have a basic HTML knowledge. Okay, let's go to the PPT. We'll see basic HTML knowledge. So HTML introduction. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. HTML describes the structure of web pages using markup. HTML elements are the building blocks of HTML pages. HTML elements are presented by tags. HTML tags label pieces of content such as heading, paragraph, table and so on. Browsers do not display the HTML tags but use them to render the content of the page. Okay, HTML is hypertext markup language. By writing HTML code, you will create web pages and HTML elements are represented by tags and we will see what is the typical HTML looks like. Go here. If this is the HTML page, behind this, what is the code written? So to see that, right click view page source. Okay. So this is the code they have written to display this page. Okay. When you write this kind of code and you when save this as means this is registered at HTML dot HTML then when you try to open that it will show something like this okay very rich look and no very what you say organized way okay here you have text boxes in the side you have image in the top you have labels sorry menu in the top you have title here you have logo something like that. To display this kind of information, you have written this kind of code. Okay, this is HTML code. When you open, this is not open like this. It will open like this means this is called rendering. Now, here you will have the tags. This HTML is a tag. This head is a tag. This script is a tag. Div is a tag. Nav is a tag. Span is a tag. Li is a tag. Ul is a tag. These are all called tags in html okay html elements html elements usually consist of a start tag and end tag with the content inserted in between okay you will have a start tag and end tag in between you will have the actual content so they will see html attributes all html elements can have attributes Attributes provide additional information about an element. Attributes are always specified in the start tag. Attributes usually come in name or value pairs like name equal to value. Okay. HTML element may have attributes. Attributes will give the more information and the attributes will reside in only in the start tag. In the end tag, you will not have any information. Attributes usually in the, uh, in the form of name, value, combination. Okay, here you see a sample tag. Okay, tag name. So it's tag name attribute equal to attribute value, and then in between content goes here, and the last slash tag name. Here the tag name, here slash tag name means this is starting tag, this is ending tag. In the starting tag, you will have attributes. In the ending tag, it will close, it will be slash tag name. Then only it indicates that the ending tag. Slash means a ending. In between, you will have, you see that content goes here. And the starting tag, ending tag will be in the less than and greater than symbol in between. Okay, this is a typical example for a sample tag. Now, if you assume this is a sample html okay if this is a sample html just we saw that the particular demo site right the same way if it is particular code when you render this one when you save this as html and when you try to open this in a browser see this is the look and feel of that particular code right when you go back you see that P, this is red, this is thick, this is green, this is thick and green. And you have a hyperlink for visit automation testing dot in. Here you have a name, something like that. So when you go to the next slide, you see that this is red, this is thick, this is green, this is thick and green. Visit automation testing dot in, the name text box. Here you have a drop down, something like that. 
okay if you write that code it by applying some css cascading styles it will say if you apply some css means some styling then it looks something like this when you render on the web page okay and behind this you will have some html code that we needed to identify that element that is the reason we are discussing all these things okay when you go to the next slide if it is a sample html just a small example the starting tag is html in html you have a head tag in the head tag you have a title and in html you have a body tag inside that p tag h1 tag span tag a tag a means anchor tag and then body close html close in the p means starting tag you see slash p is ending tag in between you have a content this is red and in the starting tag you have attribute called class is called red okay class is one of the attributes so we'll discuss all these things step by step in the upcoming slide okay in the previous code HTML head title body p h1 span and a are tags right we have seen that and p h1 and span tags contains an attribute called class and anchor tag contain attribute called href when you go to the previous section you see that p h1 span having class attribute but coming to the a having href attribute okay and the points to remember here each tag will have start and end tag each tag may contain a parent or not each tag may contain a child or not each tag may contain a grandchild or not each tag may contain a grandparent or not so this is the points to remember so if you have a starting tag you should have a end tag so a tag may contain parent a tag may contain child the same way a tag may contain grandparent a tag may contain grandchild okay these relations also will helpful to identify the elements okay it may have parent and child okay that relation is also helpful to identify that element that is the reason we are discussing all these things what is parent what is child okay so we'll go to the next in the above code html is the root tag okay we started with the html right that is the root tag head and body are child tags of html okay when you go back you see that html is a root tag head and body are what child of html and the title is child of head head is parent of title and the same way p h1 span a are child of means children of body and the same way body is parent of p h1 span and a with respect to html head is a child but title is grandchild with respect to the title head is a parent html is a grandparent the same relation what will follow in the human relation the same way we have father and grandfather grandmother something like that the same relation here also and coming to the body body is parent of html but html is grandparent of this p tag h1 tag span tag anchor tag and the same way body is child of html and p h1 these are grandchild grandchildren and html is grandparent of these tags okay so the same thing we discussed earlier body and head are same and the same way if it in the same hierarchy head and body is in the same hierarchy and p h1 span a are in the same hierarchy means these are all children of body so this p h1 span a are called siblings and the same way head and body are siblings so p h1 span and a are child tag of body tag body is parent tag of p html is grandparent of p h1 span and a tag p h1 span and a are grandchild children of html tag class is an attribute to p h1 and span tags href is an attribute to anchor tag so we already seen all these things right the same thing i am discussing here when you go to the next below are the sample elements so when you take a typical html page what are the elements you will see the html page may consist 
a text box, text area, button, radio button, check boxes, image, drop down, chosen drop down, web table, frames, a date picker, etc. These are all examples. Okay. When you go to the web page here, you see that yeah, these are all text boxes. This is text area. And coming down, these two are radio buttons. These three are check boxes. And this is one of the drop downs. And this is drop down. And country is chosen drop down. And then this is drop down. When you come here, this is an image or this is a logo. Okay. These are the typical elements you can see on a each and every web page. Right. Now, the conclusion. What is the conclusion out of this all these slides? To identify the element in Selenium WebDriver, we need to depend on the tags of the corresponding application. I already told you that the HTML tag, the basic information, the basic knowledge why you need to identify the element on a web page. So, need to identify the element uniquely to interact with that element. So, if you want to interact with a particular element, you need to find that element particularly. Okay, let's take an example. You have a group of people. In the group of people, two people or more than one person may have the same name. If you take an example of John, there may be more than one person having the John. So, how you will identify, how you call them? If you say John, more than one people will respond. So, how you uniquely make them to respond? Okay. If he is a student, you will have student ID. If I say 1, 2, 3, the particular person will respond. If I say 007, a particular person can respond. But the same way, if it is a, uh, if uh, that person is an employee, if you, ha you have an employee ID. So, by using that unique identification, you will identify a person uniquely. The same way, if you want to identify an element on the web page, you need to find that element uniquely. That we will see. For this, we will depend on attributes of tags also. Okay. Sometimes the attributes will give the provision to identify an element uniquely. That is the reason attributes are also important. Whether the element is single or one of the groups also, we need to identify that uniquely. You have more than one HTML, I'm sorry, input box. You have more than one checkbox. Okay. Even then also, if you want to perform an action on the particular element, you need to find that element uniquely. Okay. How you will identify that part, uh, element uniquely, we will see in a, our upcoming sessions. Okay. Thank you.